So I'm upgrading to a new paddle switch. This is single pole, which means just one switch for one light, not two switches on both sides of the room. And also a new outlet as well. You need needle nose pliers, wire strippers, a flat head and Phillips head screwdriver, electrical tape, and the drill. So the first thing you're gonna do with your flat head screwdriver is unscrew the two screws for the wall plate. And once you get that second screw out, the plate should come right off. Next, you wanna remove the two screws that are securing the switch to the electrical box. Once the screws are out, carefully pull out that switch to reveal the wiring. So now I'm gonna unscrew the black wire, which is the hot wire that sends the 120 volt current. And then the red wire, which is the neutral wire in this case, which brings the electricity back to the box. So this is an older house. This particular electrical switch doesn't have a ground. So I'm gonna have to install my own ground. Now inside that box, there's a screw on the top that I'll be easily able to attach my ground to it. So here I just have some 10-3 Romex cable that I had in my shed. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. And once I open that up, there's actually a ground in there that I'm gonna use. And there it is. So in this particular box, if you look at the top, there's a screw with a plate. I can utilize that as the ground. So my copper wire, I'm putting a little bend in it. I secured it to the screw, and now with my flathead screwdriver, I'm screwing it in to secure it to the box, making my ground. And I like to use my needle nose pliers just to crimp the end of that copper wire. And on my flathead screwdriver, just tighten up that screw and it's locked in beautifully. So as I stated earlier, this is a single pole switch, which means one switch for one light. Two poles means one switch on both sides of the room to connect one light. So there's the two terminals on one side with the green ground on the bottom. So this switch is actually labeled uh, the top screw is the hot and the bottom screw is the neutral. So with my drill, I'm just going to unscrew the screws, which makes it easier to attach my black hot and my red neutral and first I'm doing the red neutral once it's in give it a quick screw not too much torque and then I attach the hot on top and screw that in as well now some switches you're able to just hook the wires into them, but this was a little more different. So generally you don't have to take off the screws, but I did to make it easier for me. All right, and last is the ground. With my needle nose pliers, I'm gonna make a little hook in it, and then I'm gonna attach that to the green screw so this outlet will be grounded. Once it's hooked, I can use my drill and tighten it up. And once it's pretty good, I'll use my needle nose pliers again to kind of crimp the end of that copper wire. And then I'll tighten it up one more time with the drill to make sure it's taut. So once all the wiring secured to the switch, you're going to want to bend the wires in a Z pattern. That allows them to easily slide into the junction box. And then the switch itself will slide in there neatly. Line up the bottom screws that connect the switch to the junction box. Use the drill, but don't over tighten because you're gonna wanna adjust the switch to make sure it's perfectly straight. Once everything's neat and secured, you're gonna wanna adjust the switch so it's perfectly straight up and down. And now with the drill, you can tighten up both screws and lock it in place.
Now you have your switch plate. It's going to fit right over that switch. You're going to need your flathead screwdriver. And tighten it up. Very simple. And now you're done. Go back downstairs to your basement. Switch the breaker back. And make sure that your switch turns on the light. Very good. So now we're going to swap out an outlet. It's very similar to the switch. So we remove the plate. And this particular switch has an insulation foam around it. So just cut that out as well. And now with your drill, unscrew the top screw and the bottom screw, which will free the outlet from its junction box. Now this particular outlet was wrapped in electrical tape to protect the terminals, which is always a good idea. So I'm going to remove that first before I unscrew the terminals to release the wiring. Now as you can see, the one I'm replacing it with has the same exact terminals on the same spot as the old one. So be cognizant of which wire went to which terminal and you'll easily be able to replace them and not make any mistakes. So just as I did previously, I'm going to unscrew the terminals and release the hot wire and the neutral wire from the old electrical outlet. So thankfully this outlet had a ground, so I'm unscrewing that now. So with my needle nose pliers, I'm just adjusting the wiring so they'll easily be able to hook onto the terminals and I first connect the ground. Crimp the end. And then I'll screw it in place with my drill. Next was my neutral wire. I'm going to adjust that wire as well with my needle nose pliers. And I'm going to attach that to the same exact terminal that was on the previous outlet. Crimp the end really quickly. And then I'll be able to secure it with my drill. So now both the white neutral wire and the ground are secured to the outlet. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to secure the black hot wire. So using my needle nose pliers, I'm adjusting the hook on the black hot wire. So now I'm able to hook it around the gold terminal. Crimp the end. And then screw it in with my drill. So just like the previous electrical outlet had, I'm going to wrap this outlet with electrical tape. It keeps the terminals protected from hitting any other metal, causing a fuse to blow, or any other fires. So again, when you want to put your outlet back into the box, make sure your wiring are in a Z pattern. So they fold easily and neatly into the box. Then with my drill, I'll secure the bottom screw and then the top screw of the outlet to secure it to the junction box. Now I'll just verify that the outlet is perfectly straight up and down. So now when I put the faceplate on, everything looks neat. And your two screws are going to line up with the two holes. Again, you have to use your flathead screwdriver, secure the top, and then the bottom. After you're done, go turn the breaker back on, plug something in, and make sure everything works.